Hello mortals. Our sun is such a lovely star, providing us with light and heat and skin cancer sometimes. You and me would have never existed if not for it. Wouldn't it be a shame if we make some slight changes to our solar system and this happens? So let's take a look at what would happen if we replace our sun with some rather exotic objects from throughout the universe. Thanks to Magellan TV for sponsoring this episode. If the sun were to suddenly disappear from the center of the solar system, we wouldn't know about it for 8 minutes and 20 seconds. That's how long it takes for its light to reach us. And what else travels at the speed of light? Gravity. That would mean that for roughly 8 minutes, all the planets would continue orbiting an empty center of the solar system before they all drift into outer space. Now that the sun is gone, let's look for a replacement. How about we start with the closest star to the now gone sun, Proxima Centauri. It is six times smaller than the sun and yet one and a half times as bright. So even though the size difference, it would appear bigger in the sky. If we'd have a checklist of short-term effects, they'd include severe sunburns, or should I say, Proxima Centauri burns, and the planets flying off into the darkness due to the weaker gravity. Now what if instead of one, we would have had two stars, a binary system? In actuality, more than 50% of the star systems contain at least two stars. For starters, that would make the orbits of the planets very complex if the chaos theory is anything to guide by. From a probability standpoint, the nights would probably be very short, and depending on the type of the stars, the days would look different. The first half of the day could have a blue sky and the other half a red one, or purple if both stars shine on the same side of the planet simultaneously. Oh, and forget about the four seasons. We'd have like 20 flesh-melting summers and some chilly winters. So on the checklist we'd have, deadly sunburns, multicolored sky, pretty weird orbits, and a lot of vitamin C, maybe slightly too much of it. Since you're watching this, I'm sure you enjoy learning about the universe. That's why I can wholeheartedly recommend the documentary series, Secrets of the Universe, on Magellan TV, our today's sponsor, that you get to try for free. Find out what lies in the hearts of black holes, or experience the beauty of the destructive power of stars. Magellan TV hosts over 3,000 different documentaries, on topics ranging anywhere from space and technology, to the history of science. It was founded by filmmakers that believe that science defines the cutting edge of the human civilization. Thus, their team of professional producers and curators brings you new scientific content on a weekly basis, with the smartest perspectives on the world. Enjoy Magellan TV on any device without any ads, and get a full month for free by following the link in the description. Hurry up and become even smarter. Now what if we go bigger, and replace the sun with the biggest star from the Milky Way, the Pistol Star? For starters, that means no more Earth, as its orbit would be engulfed by the outer layer of the star. Considering it's 10 million times as bright as the Sun, you'd go blind even if you stood on Pluto, you'd probably also die. But the sky would look really brightly blue at least so that's nice. But we can go even bigger. Let's replace the Sun with the biggest known star in the universe, Stevenson 2 18. Now even looking from Pluto wouldn't save you. This monster would engulf the entire solar system. If you were to travel at the speed of light through the star from one side to another it would take you three entire hours. Meanwhile for the sun it would be 10 seconds. And just in case this wasn't big enough for you, let's try a quasi star. These extremely massive giants probably used to live in the early universe. They grew so big that their core collapsed into a black hole and started slowly devouring it from the inside out. If the New Horizons space probe traveled for 20 years exiting the solar system, it would only then not be engulfed if a quasi-star replaced the sun. But size isn't the only parameter that can make a space object extreme. Take a look at neutron stars, the black hole wannabes that just didn't have what it takes. A spoonful of it weights a lot, about 900 pyramids of Giza. That's like at least a billion bananas in weight. But because of their insane density, neutron stars are usually small, no more than 20 kilometers in size. If one replaced the sun, it would be barely visible, and yet, it would doom the entire solar system, as all the objects would fall towards it and get instantly crushed under the insane gravity. If enough matter falls into it, it could get past its critical point and make its parents proud. 
So on our checklist we'd have the transformation of the Earth into a neutronic omelet. But if that sounds boring, increase the neutron star's magnetic field 1000 times over, and you get a magnetar. It would be 100 trillion times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. So add to the checklist the complete obliteration of Earth's magnetic field and pretty much any electronics on Earth. And if that's still not enough, give the neutron star a good spin, so that it rotates every millisecond, and you have a pulsar, which emits radiation beams through its poles. Considering the proximity from the Earth, if such a beam were to intersect with us it would fry the atmosphere and anything on the surface of the Earth with it, in a couple of milliseconds. And if neutron stars were somewhat extreme, let's get to the champions of the universe, the black and white holes. The story with black holes is fairly straightforward. Have one the mass of the sun replaced the sun and nothing happens except the slow freezing of the planet due to the lack of sunlight. However, humans might barely escape extinction by surviving off of alternative energy sources. But make the black hole the same size as the sun and the game over screen comes up much faster. You'll at least have a nice view in the sky during your last days. But replace the sun-sized black hole with the largest black hole in the universe, and your sky would look entirely black, and not only the sky but everything, because no photons would hit your eyes, because you'd be inside the black hole, probably dead, most likely dead, definitely dead. But that was to be expected. What's less intuitive is what would happen if instead of a black hole, we'd have a white hole in the center of the solar system. As a quick reminder, white holes are the mathematical inverse of black holes. If nothing can exit the one, nothing can enter the other. We don't really know what they would look like since they are completely hypothetical, so we'll just go with the opposite of black. But a common misunderstanding is that a certain anti-gravity force pushes things away from the edge of the white hole. Instead, like any things with mass, white holes attract matter towards their singularity the same way black holes do. The only difference is that infalling matter would never reach the singularity. So if we had one replacing our sun, it would mirror the same outcome as having a black hole up until the event horizon. Once passed, assuming the Earth wouldn't get vaporized, it would start its eternal journey towards the singularity. Resulting from some fancy math that neither you nor me can understand, after an infinite amount of time, a white hole would transform into a black hole. So at the end of our eternal journey, which will never take place, we would still find ourselves at the heart of a black hole, which might be slightly disappointing. So in a way we should be thankful to our sun, it gives us 6 more billion years to sort our shit and pack our luggage here on earth to travel to some new homes before it engulfs earth as a red supergiant. So make sure to embrace its sunlight, just use sun cream because apparently any amount of tanning at all is bad for your skin, so take care.